Yo guys, this is Smiley Monster back with another Albion Online Builds video. In this video, we are going over the bow build that I've been using a lot in my Corrupted Dungeons PvP videos. So let's get to it, the Insane Sustain bow build. So several of you have been asking for this, it's finally here. I have used the bow for quite a while now and there are a really fun weapon to play and are good against most matchups in the Corrupted Dungeons. A quick breakdown of the video, first we'll be going over the equipment used, alternative equipment, skills for each equipment, and then to finish off tips and tricks that I have learned over the course of playing this weapon. Before we continue, a quick 5 seconds, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel it helps me out massively with the YouTube algorithm. Starting off with the equipment, we start with the weapon, it's the normal slash regular bow. This weapon is really good single target damage due to its enchanted quiver E skill. Pair this with the attack speed passive and you have a machine gun like attack speed. It also has a fairly good clear speed due to the AoE on the Q and W skills. There are currently 3 Q skills on the bow, multi shot, deadly shot and poison arrow. Multi shot fires a volley of arrows in a cone in front of you dealing damage and knocking the enemies back. Deadly shot fires an arrow at a targeted location and has a fairly high range and Poison Arrow attacks a targeted enemy, dealing damage over time and stacks up to 3 times. Multi Shot and Deadly Shot are skill shots, which means you do not have to target the enemies while Poison Arrows you need to have a targeted enemy. For PvE clearing, you want to have Multi Shot active. When you get invaded, keep Multi Shot, inspect your opponent with the Y hotkey, and if they don't have any skills that have cast times like Assassin Hood, Great Nature's Ease or Great Axe Whirlwinds, then you should switch to Poison Arrow. The reason you go Poison Arrow is that it keeps the enemy in combat longer and helps with the Mercenary Jacket procs. Learning when to switch will come with practice and it highly depends on your playstyle. There are 4 W skills on the bow. Explosive Arrow, Frost Shot, Speed Shot and Ray of Light. Explosive Arrow enchants your arrows to explode and deal AoE damage. Frost Shot fires a Ice Arrow and slows the enemies in front of you while also moving you away from them. Speed Shot increases your attack speed and movement speed, but this skill is useless and needs a rework. And Ray of Light deals AoE damage to a targeted location, rooting enemies for a short time. The only targeted skill is Speed Shot. Explosive Arrows are a buff and they can be purged, and Frost Shot and Ray of Light are skill shots. For PvE, you want to have Ray of Light or Explosive Arrows. Both are good skills for clearing mob packs. When you invade or get invaded, switch to Frost Shot. The reason you have multi shot and frost shot is because if it's a matchup that beats you in the weapon grid, then you will need to run and break crystals. Since you have switched to the skills that push the enemy back and slow them and move you away from them, you have a higher chance of surviving. If it's not enemy that you need to run from, then switch to explosive arrows for the extra burst damage as well as mercenary jacket procs. However, if the enemy has movement skills on the Q or W, keep frost shot on since you'll need to catch up or kite depending on the situation. The E skill is Enchanted Quiver. This applies a buff to you giving your arrows increased damage and attack speed, ramping up each auto attack to a maximum of 6 decks. This skill is where the damage comes from in this build, however it is purgeable, meaning that Black Hands, Fiend Cows, Mage Robes are your natural enemies. Anything that purges you need to be wary of. Also Cultus Cows since you are an attack speed build. If you don't pay attention and you attack on a full stack of fury, you will kill yourself on the Cultus Cow. You want to have this skill up at all times. It has a 20 second cooldown, but the buff lasts for 30 seconds. So you can offset the skill by 10 seconds and always have the buff up. This is one of, if not the most important thing to remember. Always have your E skill up or on rotation. For passives, you want to have the energy passive for PVE, since your enchanted quiver and explosive arrows can drain your mana pretty fast. And when you get into PVP, switch to attack speed or piercing shot. If you fight kiting builds, then keep it on energetic, since you have to be running around and spamming your skills, you need a form of mana region or they will out sustain you and kill you. Some examples of kiting builds are Warbow, Badon, Quarterstaff, Halifull, etc. For the helmet slot, you have several options. We will be going with the Spectre Hood, since it prayers really well with the Mercenary Jacket. But you could also pick from the Fiend Cow to Purge, Wanderlust and other Mercenary Jacket buffs. Guardian Helmet to the shield and to absorb damage, as well as clearing darts effects. Hunter Hood for the reflect. For Spectre Hood, you want the Flash of Insight skill. This skill resets your armor piece cooldown. 
for the passives, all three passives work. I normally go balanced mind and switch to cooldowns if I need to chase or run away. For the armor piece, you want the mercenary jacket. The mercenary jacket skill bloodlust allows you to heal every time you do a damage to an enemy. This includes damage over time effects, but not poison potions. This is why you have the poison arrows, explosive arrows, and the spectre hood. They all pair well with this item. And since it's a heavy kite sustain metal right now, you're going to need all the healing you can get for the passives, same as the spectre hood. For the leg slot, I normally go with soldier boots. This is because Wanderlust is a lifesaver if you want to chase slash change skills or reset the fight. However, be careful since it's a buff and it can be purged also. You don't know how many times I've activated the spell to only get purged because I'm not paying attention when the enemies activated the mage robe or black hands resetting their combo. There are several options for the cape slot. Thetford cape for the extra AoE damage and better clear speed. Keeper cape for the better burst and damage potential. Bridgewatch cape to slow your enemies and get more normal attacks off. Or my personal favorite, the Martlock cape. The Martlock cape increases your defenses when you drop to 25% HP and it has saved me many times inside the corrupted dungeons. It has a 3 minute cooldown, so be careful not to activate it by accident when you're PvE clearing. Satchel of Insight if you want extra fame, fame credits at the cost of silver. Finally, the food and potions. You need to have two sets of food and potions, one for the PvE side and one for the PvP side. For the PvE side, you want to have health region food such as super fish and tier 4 poisons for the mini bosses, bosses and the fat hit point enemy mobs. For the PvP side, there are several options in terms of food and it all depends on your playstyle slash personal preference. You can go Avalonian Beef Stew for the HP region and damage, Normal Beef Stew for the damage, Eel Stew for the cooldown and damage, Beef Sandwich for the extra hit points, or my personal favourite, the Lifesteal Food. Having the Lifesteal Food active is like having another mercenary jacket that cannot be purged. Over the course of the fight, it will heal you up quite a bit. But if you don't want the lifesteal food, then the next best choice is Deadwall to Eel Stew, since it gives you both cooldown and damage. As for the potions, bring healing potions or resistance potions. Also make sure you always carry a Frostbeak Deadeye Fish, since it could be the difference between life and death when fighting a CC heavy build, such as the Bellend Quarter Staff meta going on right now. It gives you a 30% increase in CC resistance, bloody brilliant. Now that the equipment and skills are out of the way, let's move on to the tips and tricks. Not all of them will apply, but given the situation you're in, pick the ones that apply to you. The number one tip is always have your E skill up at all times. Be wary of purge abilities and purge skills, they hard counter this build. Multi shot interrupt skills with cast times such as Assassin Hoods, Great Nature E staffs, etc. Try and time your shots to cancel their channels. Multi shot slash deadly shot is a good versus invisible skill such as Undead Cape, Hellion Hood, and Assassin Jacket since it's a skill shot and you don't need to target the enemy. Keep poison arrow stacks up at all times. It helps with the mercenary jacket procs and when you activate bloodlust, if you are running or chasing, poison arrow a mob or crystal to get the extra ticks off. Use multi shot for black hands if they don't have a cleric robe. This is because you can interrupt their assassin hood. Fight near a crystal or high hit point mobs that don't have AoE ground targeting skills. This way, if you need to heal up with a mercenary jacket, you can quickly switch and throw a few poison arrows at them. Only use your Wanderlust when the black hands have done both their combos, or if their E isn't up since they purged your movement skill. Be wary of cultist cows and reflex. You're an auto attack speed build, you will kill yourself. Poison arrow is a good skill to proc your mercenary jacket bloodlust. Explosive arrow is a good skill to proc your mercenary jacket bloodlust. Bowls don't do well against Bowls of Badons, Dagger Pairs with Hellion Hood, Black Hands, Quarter Staffs, Girl Seekers, War Bowls, Hadafuls, and some Frost Staffs. If you don't have a Frost Peak Deadeye Fish, then avoid fights with One Handed Daggers, Quarter Staff, and Girl Seekers, or any other CC build. Run from Harrow Fools 100% of the time. They are annoying to fight, and the only way you can win is if they mess up more than three times. That pretty much sums up the video. Hopefully I have covered everything you guys wanted to know about the build. If you have any tips of your own, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more Outburn online content, as well as turn on the notification bell so you guys know when I go live or post a new video. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next Albion online video.